It's another delicious day here in the Let's Make Food From Food kitchen and I'm going to make some creamy Italian sausage pasta. So, and I'm going to make homemade noodles too. You don't have to. If you don't want to, go get some penny pasta, okay? Um, and this, I'm going to start my sausage off. This is just ground pork. We're going to make it into sausage. I also have a link to a separate recipe for that. If you want it, I can put it down below or you can make it this way. Um, or you can just buy Italian sausage. You know I'm gonna make it from scratch though, right? Okay, so what I wanna do, I wanna finely mince my one shallot here. I wouldn't normally put onion directly into my sausage, but because I'm using all of this in my pasta recipe, I wanna use a shallot. And otherwise, I would just add it to my ingredients later. Okay, I'm just gonna take my bench knife and get all of my onion right there into the bowl with the ground pork. And if you want, you could use ground chicken or ground turkey as well, instead of. Okay, I have two cloves of garlic and I'm just gonna smash those right in here. Might as well move this over here now. Okay. Then I'm gonna do one teaspoon. This is pink Himalayan salt. I like this one, there's no caking agent in it. Then I'm gonna do, it'll be about a half a teaspoon of pepper you can measure if you'd like if you like more pepper just use more pepper okay now I have a bunch of herbs set out here fennel this is basil from my garden that I dried and thyme oregano some paprika and I actually got too much here um gonna do this is parsley and dried parsley so I need one teaspoon of that okay now all I want to do is get this mixed up and I'm not actually making this until tomorrow I'm doing it now because I want my flavors to really meld into that meat because um, that's gonna be the forefront of our pasta flavor is going to be our sausage so I wanted to do it the day before you could do it the morning of you could even do it an hour or so before if you're not buying it um, I just like to do it this way and I have the time, so why not? This actually, you can keep this in your fridge for a few days uncooked. You could freeze it. So all I'm gonna do is make sure this is really well mixed and then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. Now, if you're making this same day, just try to, you know, try to give it at least an hour. Um, those flavors are really gonna mix in well with the meats and it just gives it a little bit better um, taste in the end. So I'm gonna let that sit in the fridge overnight. I'm going to make my pasta, which I'll put the link down below for that recipe. Um, that does need to be made a little bit in advance because it does have to sit in the fridge for a minimum of 30 minutes before you actually shape your pasta. Um, because I've already made it, I'm not gonna go through all of that with you in this video. I'll just refer back to that one. And I'm using the pasta attachment for my KitchenAid to press out um, the shape of my pasta. Um, so if you don't have all of that, feel free to just either use a spaghetti or flat noodle if you're making it yourself, um, or you can go buy a penny pasta. It's up to you on how you wanna go about that. I will be making my own. So, I'll see you tomorrow. So I've got my pasta dough here, and it has completely chilled. Now I'm just going to make some strips, and then I am using the rigatoni attachment on my KitchenAid. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna turn this on and start feeding it through, and it'll make the shape that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little flour going inside there and also on my pan that my pasta is going to sit on. Okay. Okay, I have run my dough through. This is double what I showed you. I made 
two pounds and separated them into one pound packs so that I could make one for this meal, which is this right here. This is one pound and I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to cover it up um, with saran wrap. I'm just going to cover the cooking sheets with plastic wrap because I don't want them to dry out. These, however, this is a whole nother pound of noodles and I am going to dry these. I'm going to let them air dry and then I'm going to put them away for another day. So this cooking is going to take probably um, 11 to 13 minutes because this is a larger, thicker pasta noodle. So I'm going to dry these and then I will pack them up for another time. But it's something that I recommend doing. That's the only reason I even showed you. Um, when you're making your own pasta, if you, it's a lot of work and it's worth it. I promise it is so worth it. But you can save yourself down the road by doing some for now, some for later. So we've done a lot of work up to now. So what I want to do is you can see I got my shirt all dirty <laughs> in my pasta making. Okay. <clears throat> so this is heating up. What I want to do is put my oil in there and get that heated up. My water for my pasta is over here. I want that to come to a boil. This is kind of a an orchestra. Just a little one though, just a little one. Um, I'm gonna take my half a cup of onion and get that cooking. The next thing I'm gonna add to that in a couple minutes here is some garlic. I have three very large cloves. I like a lot of garlic. If you don't, just use less. Easy peasy. Okay, I just wanna stir this up a little bit. One of the things I have ready to go behind me on top of my little oven is my easy, no need baguette to go with this. It's going to be delicious. I love bread with pasta. I, they just they go together. They're meant to be. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze in my garlic. All of my seasonings otherwise are already in my sausage. So I don't need to do a whole lot in that regard other than the onion and the garlic. A quick note about homemade pasta. It will suck the flavor out of anything, which is good. But um, I always add a little bit of extra salt to my, my water when I boil the pasta. But first, bring your pot of water up to a boil, then add the salt. We don't want to change the temperature of our boiling water. Look it up. Mm. Garlic always smells so fragrant when it's cooking. I love it. Next, I want to take my sausage and just get it all in there. I'm going to break it up some, and as it cooks, I'll continue to break it up. So I'm going to let that cook down a little bit. While that goes, I'm going to cut up my little tomatoes. I just have one cup. Freak free cut, one cup free cut <laughs> of little cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna move these aside. That's my salt for my water. And I, you can cut them in halves or you can cut them in quarter, whatever your preference is. Um, we're gonna add these in in a little bit. Just keep an eye on your sausage. We wanna cook it until it's no longer pink. Something else about the um, making the sausage yourself and getting the ground pork is you can ask for a leaner ground pork so there's not as much fat and grease in it. Okay, my sausage is done. I just want to get my butter in there and get it melted. Okay, next I want to take my two tablespoons of unbleached all-purpose flour and just sprinkle it all over and then stir it in. And that is going to help thicken our sauce. So what happens is the flour sticks to the fat, which is fat from the pork sausage, which I got a leaner one, so I wanted to add the butter in. Um, and the butter, the fat from the butter, the flour adheres to that and becomes a roux, a paste, that will then take our chicken broth and thicken it up. You could also use vegetable broth, but it's up to you, your preference. Okay. Pour that in and 
stir it up. We're gonna let that cook. That broth will then start to thicken a little bit and then we'll add the next ingredients. All right, this has come to a simmer. What I wanna do is turn this down and I'm gonna add in my one and a half cups of heavy cream and my tomatoes. Oof, I just splattered. So messy. Now, I'm just gonna let that cook down for a little bit on a low. I don't even really need it to simmer. We could bring it up to a simmer and then turn it down to a low, that's fine. But I am going to just keep this turned down and cover it up until my noodles are almost done. Okay, my water is boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and just dump my salt in, except the salt that didn't come out. There we go. I have my full rolling boil. What I'm gonna do is put some noodles in there and then start my timer. And I wanna be careful that they don't stick together so when, as soon as I get them in, I wanna stir them. And then I'll put the rest of them in. As closely together as possible so our cooking time is even. But I don't wanna just plop them in there. I wanna make sure that they are separating and not sticking together. Now I have a timer set here for four minutes and I'm just gonna let these cook. Even if they're not all the way done because I'm gonna then transfer them into the sauce where they can continue to cook and they will get flavored with our delicious sauce that we made. Okay, this is looking really good. Just wanna give these a stir and make sure all is well. See, this is what they shouldn't stick together. The first time that I made homemade pasta, it was such a mess. I made spaghetti noodles and um, I tried to dust them with flour so they wouldn't stick together. Something went wrong. And before they even hit the boiling water, I had this big pile of almost dough again. <laughs> and so I tried to cook them and it was just a big pile. It was just a big pile and it's okay. It happens, it's part of learning. Um, so just be patient when you're first starting to make your pasta dough. Um, it's so worth it. I wish I had more time to make it just all the time. So we've only got about another minute and a half left on those. I want to give a quick shout out to a few people who I know have been following along and I really appreciate it. Um, my in-laws, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, they've been watching um, Sia up in Clarksville. Thank you for your continued support. I know I've got um, Josh over in Cross Plains, thank you. And of course, everyone, I appreciate everyone. Um, comment, let me know you're watching all the time and I'll say hi, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these into my sauce. Okay, and I just wanna let them drain out. And of course you could do this in a colander if you don't have one of these spiders, but what I would t say to do is take a good big cup of the pasta water and reserve it for your sauce. Whenever you're making a sauce and you can use some of your pasta water, it just makes such a difference. Try it, especially homemade pasta. So, you know, try it. I encourage you. I'm gonna turn off my pot here. I reserved a little bit of my pound of noodles for my kids because they won't eat the sauce. Because I know I said a, a pound and um, I didn't put the entire pound in there, mostly because you know, I want my kids to eat dinner too. I'm gonna stir these in. And then I'm gonna take my pasta water. I'm gonna go ahead and put a ladle full in here. Okay. So you can do about a half a cup to a cup. I'm gonna leave it at that. That was maybe two thirds of a cup. And I'm gonna stir that in there and then I'm gonna let it cook for a couple more minutes and let those noodles really just absorb some delicious flavor. Oh, it's always so much quieter when that turns off. All right, this is ready to go. I just turned it off. My tomatoes have cooked down a little bit. And so now we're ready to plate it up. And I just, it's so fragrant and delicious. I am ready to eat, okay? I've also got 
my delicious bread here that I made. I'm gonna top this with a little bit of fresh chopped parsley and some fresh grated Parmesan. Delicious. So I've got my bread, I've got my pasta. Mm. So much about this is amazing. It's all homemade and it makes such a difference. Give it a try. Okay, now I'm gonna get some sausage and some pasta and a tomato. Mm. Mm. This is delicious. I'm gonna take some bread and just dip it right in that sauce. Mm. No regrets. Mm -mm. Somebody might need to come get me later with a wheelbarrow and just scoop me up and ship me off to bed because I'm not sure I'm gonna make it. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's delicious. Thanks for joining me here today on yet another kitchen adventure here in the Let's Make Food From Food kitchen. From my kitchen to yours, let's make food from food. That's one boy.